Hello, everyone, and welcome into the Go 24-7 podcast. Fall camp may take a break today, but we do not here on the Go 24-7 YouTube channel or wherever you're listening to this, whether it's Apple, Spotify. If you're there, follow, like, and subscribe. And if you're on YouTube, make sure to subscribe to the channel, set up your notifications for when we drop the latest content. My name is Bryce Kuhn alongside Glenn West and Dylan Sanders. And guys, fall camp is, we're in the first full week. We can say that. We've gone from just helmets shirt and shorts to now shells. Now we're going to start getting ready for pads. And there's a lot of things we can take away. Uh, you know, stuff made its way to social media about a certain, uh, Glenn, what was the word we used? Brouhaha, a fisticuffs, yeah. a misunderstanding. Uh, that's obviously been well documented, but it has been an eventful beginning to fall camp for LSU and Brian Kelly. Kelly has spoke with the media twice, and we've heard some some players as well. So as we kind of talk about, you know, our big takeaways, our reaction from the, you know, first couple of days. Glenn, we'll start it off with you right here. What is your biggest takeaway? I know you kind of like the running back room. We mentioned, obviously, Kelly mentioned day one that John Emery Jr. is going to be back. It's a deep room. He's joked about it a lot. What is your biggest takeaway from what we've seen, maybe reps-wise, or anything kind of in between with this running back room? Yeah, I mean, uh, I'll get to the running back room thing in a second. I, I just think the, the, the overview, I think, just from – watching this roster, watching all these guys outside on the field is that these players are in pretty good shape. I mean, the the heat out here has been no joke. I think it's important that we mention that right off the bat. Like mm -hmm. we're having record setting days, I think seven, eight, nine days in a row now uh, for heat here uh, in Baton Rouge. And, um, you know, the, the, the players are certainly feeling the elements. I mean, you can see it, um, but, the, but it hasn't really affected, I don't think the way that they've practiced, um, you know, they've, they've done a pretty good job, I think, of uh, keeping all those guys you know, healthy and hydrated. Um, and, and, you know, it, it's they, they even extended practice yesterday by about 15 or 20 minutes outside. Brian Kelly told us so, um, you know, they're I think they're adapting to the elements. You know, they're certainly going to be playing in those kinds of environments really early in the season, uh, you know, come next month. And I think the fact that they're kind of getting into the the swing of things right now um, with, with, with the heat and just, just kind of how brutal it's been um, is, is a good sign. And I think they're getting some good work in. That's just kind of my, my overview of just kind of what practices look like. I think it's, it's looked pretty clean for the most part. Obviously we don't have to go into great detail about the fight the other day, but um, outside of that, I mean, I think everybody's been pretty locked in. The coaching staff has done a nice job. Uh, with the players um, and, and they're, they're getting some good work in. And I, I think probably, you know, diving into the the running back room a little bit, it's, it's the, the one position that I've really kind of keep glaring at just because there's so many bodies that they're rotating in and out right now. I mean, we're a weekend um, to, to practice and it, it seems like everybody's had a chance with the first team. I mean, I, I don't, I can't recall anybody who hasn't had some of those um, reps uh, with Jaden Daniels, with Malik Neighbors, with some of those offensive linemen, um, you know, whether it's seven on seven, 11 on 11, um, they, they've just done a really good job, I think, of mixing and matching those guys. And, you know, we're not going to get a clear picture, I don't think, um, with the running back room until, um, you know, next week or so until we, we I think that's probably when LSU is going to start to hone in on a depth chart for really all of its positions. I think right now they're still in the learning phase of a lot of these position battles. Um, yeah, just a, a couple of guys that have stood out to me. I mean, Kevontre Bradford um, has, has really had some nice moments. I think out of the backfield, it was a little bit of a surprise a couple of weeks ago when we learned that he had rejoined the team and, um, you know, the fact that he had put in some really great offseason work, I think the coaching staff really um, has grown to trust, you know, him a little bit more. Um, and you know, he, you know, Brian Kelly talked about him yesterday. He had to earn his way back by himself into this program. Um, and he's done it with flying colors so far. And he's been rewarded with, some, with, with I think, some really good opportunities here early in fall camp, and he's capitalized. Um, you know, I'm still of the opinion that when healthy, it's going to be kind of a Josh Williams, Logan Diggs, Noah Kane kind of show to start the, the season off against Florida State. Um, you know, Kelly kind of mentioned it was one of the questions I had for him yesterday was um, just – you know, what 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 do you think is going to happen with the rotation at running back? And he always you know goes back to the veterans rising to the top and being able to solidify those reps. And you know, I think those three are, are poised to have really good 
uh, you know, start to the year. Uh, I, I like Diggs' game a lot. You know, Noah Kane looks even a little bit more elusive and explosive than he did even in the spring. It looks like maybe he's he's trimmed down a, a little bit more uh, in the off season and he's moving really really quickly. Um, you know, Caleb Jackson's a guy that I think is is getting a lot of buzz right now early in camp just because of the physical nature with which he runs. Uh, he's still a raw prospect according to Kelly, but he's done. Uh, some some really really good things as well. So, um, yeah, you've got you've got eight guys. I mean, I didn't even mention John Emery or Armani Goodwin or, or Trey Holly, who you know was back there during the spring. I I, I just think this is going to be a really loaded running back room, and you can't really go wrong with a lot of the people that you, you know. At least I don't think they can go wrong with a lot of the guys that they've trotted out there so far. They all bring something a little bit different to the to the backfield, and I, I think that's a good thing for LSU. It's a good thing, too, when you talk about a room that can sustain injuries. Um, and look, LSU fans saw that last year. You know, you can have two or three guys nicked up at the same time. But with so many mouths to feed back there, that's the pro. Uh, obviously, the con being, you know, you can't get everyone the ball. And Brian Kelly joked about it. There's still just one football. So they got to figure out a way to get these playmakers the ball. Dylan, I know you've been in attendance with us as well. For you, what's kind of that overarching maybe view, takeaway, reaction from just the general of, of fall camp, and then obviously, like Glenn did, a position group that you're kind of looking at and you're excited to, to continue to watch. Well, it's been um, a crazy how much we've been able to watch. I think it's <laughs> has to be said we've been around a lot um, more than last year. We, we're getting a lot of actual like full practice, so that's been nice to uh, be able to get a, a vibe of the team. Uh, everyone seems bought in. Uh, I mean, you don't get people fighting if they're, you know, the, the, the negative is you have to keep the, the emotions under control, but the positive mm-hmm. is that these people are in it and they're attentive and they're, they're feeling it. They're emotional about the drills. Um, so this team is there. This team is, is really putting the attention to detail. Um, a lot of talking with position coaches after drills, a lot of, um, a lot of buy-in is, I think, the main vibe that I've gotten so far. Um, there's nobody out there that's just going about their day and getting through practice. Mm-hmm. They're all learning. Um, and, of course, the most interesting uh, position group to me, and I think to most people, is cornerback because it's pretty much an entirely new group, right? Yeah. yeah. Um, and... It's been interesting to see, but I think that there's one real standout to me, and it's been Deuce Chestnut. I think he's been the most consistent throughout camp. Um, he, he's been really impressive. But what I what I like f- that I've seen about him is not even necessarily um, on on what happens in the plays, even though that he's been fairly consistent during the plays. But it's after the play, I you know we're, we're standing right there i can hear him talking to the coaches about what are the little things that he can do to maybe win that next rep even more dominantly um so that is i, I think as a cornerback it's all about the little details if, if one thing goes wrong you, the entire play is ruined like one, you yeah. can't have a misstep pretty much as a cornerback so to have him Notice that before even going to the coaches being like, what is the small, what's the small detail? What's the minutia that I can fix? Um, Ashton stamps is a, is a freshman that uh, coach Kelly talked about the other day. Uh, I was a real big fan of him whenever I was able to watch him uh, play at uh, at, uh, Rummel last year um, as a, he was a special teamer, but now he's put on like 20 pounds and looks physically like he's ready to compete out there. LaTerrence Welch, uh, return, the only returner, a returning scholarship guy. Um, Ryan Robinson Jr. is a freshman that turned down scholarships to come here as a walk-on, and he was making plays. He had his teammates going, mm-hmm. have a day 3-6 or 3-4, whatever his uh, his number is. Zy Alexander um, from Southeastern, hashtag lion up. He is, uh, he's looking really interesting. Um, it, it, it's, it's been an interesting group so far and i think that they're going to be able to find a group of guys that they can have as the rotation uh I, obviously the num- the the name that you haven't heard me me say and it's for it's denver harris i think we just need to see more out of him in, in practice um 
I haven't, he hasn't stood out a ton to me so far. Um, but that is, you know, there's a long time left in camp mm-hmm. yeah. um, to have that happen. And I don't know, maybe I was missing something, but it, it seems to me that he's been playing more with the second team and he's still super young. Uh, and these guys, Zy Alexander, Juice Chestnut, who I would say would be one and two right now, are your veterans. They've been around longer. Um, Deuce Chestnut, P5, um, Zy Alexander at Southeastern, but he's played a lot of snaps. So it would make sense that those are your guys. But yeah, I'd like to see a little bit more out of uh, out of Denver Harris as the high ceiling transfer, you know? Yeah, I mean, I, I, I kind of agree with a lot of those sentiments there. You know, I, I, if, you, if LSU was playing a game tomorrow, Zy Alexander and Deuce Chestnut, I think, would be your outside corners. I would envision that maybe – they, they run with three safety looks and Greg Brooks, Major Burns, and Andre Sam. Um, I think Sage Ryan rotates in with the nickel. I think um, what Terrence Welsh rotates in on the outside. Um, and, and you know, I, I think, you know, Denver Harris is still a work in progress. You know, I think they're still trying to tap into what made him such an, a, a, a valuable high school prospect. And, um, you know, I, I think he's going to have his opportunities to shine during camp. They haven't really – happened for him yet but um dylan mentioned there, there's been a lot of plays that have been made um and 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 i've been really impressed by the work of andre sam um you know i know he's mm-hmm. a safety and you know but the the defensive back and secondary as a whole that that group's gonna have to really come together and work in in, in unison because um you're, you're dealing with so many new guys and so um with, with greg brooks out right now he's been dealing with a little bit of an injury um i like what andre sam's done um, you know, I think Sage Ryan tells his own, you know, he's had a couple plays where he's been beat, but he's also, I think, stuck in coverage pretty well uh, with where he's lined up in the slot there. I think he's done a really nice job overall. Um, you know, JV and Toviano is another name we haven't even mentioned yet. I think he's a guy that can be versatile at, at the safety group. He's been working he, primarily yeah. with safeties. Um, Talk about a guy who's winning reps. Uh, yeah. JV and Toviano is, is, is among the, the most rep winners. Yeah. Yeah, he's he, he's done a nice job, and I think there's going to be a role for him as well. So, yeah, it's it's still early, uh, and they haven't even put the pads on yet. I, I do think that the secondary ultimately will be fine, um, but they do need to stay healthy. I think the the cornerback room in particular needs to stay pretty healthy. I think you need to have Zy Alexander play double digit games for you. He's going to have to be a big time starter. Deuce Chestnut, same deal. Yeah, Chestnut was was getting used to the Louisiana elements the first day uh, back uh, after being up in Syracuse the last several years. So, um, but you know he's he's looked very good in his reps and he's putting in a lot of hard work. And I do think that the coaching staff has very quickly come around on him. You know he came in to this program with a little bit of an injury. He had a surgery uh, right before getting here. Um, and I think he's, he's, he's quickly won over the coaching staff with his play. Um, I think he's going to be a guy certainly to watch over the next several weeks. And as, yeah, someone another- who's lived in both, as someone who's lived in both Western New York and Baton Rouge, I cannot blame him for, uh, <laughs> for being so out of his element. <laughs> yeah, a lot of those guys were struggling, especially yesterday. We saw several guys have to come yeah. over and uh, just, you know, Take a second, because obviously it was really hot. But, you know, Kelly talked about, and you mentioned it earlier, Glenn, embracing the elements. Look, you know when you go down there to Orlando, Labor Day weekend, it's going to be hot. It's going to be humid for that game. When you play Grambling, even at home, 6 o'clock, it's going to be hot. It's going to be humid. And then on the road at Mississippi State the next week. But, you know, you guys talked about the secondary, and I agree with you. I think that the secondary, you know, was it a concern? Yes, but now we're really seeing what Kelly said back in Nashville at SEC Media Days of we just don't know. Like, you know you have a lot of talent back there. Uh, Dylan, you mentioned Denver Harris. I mean, he's a guy, obviously, uber-talented kid. But if those veterans play well, it allows Harris to continue to develop and learn to play the game at the college level, which you know we don't really know how much he was able to do that last season in College Station. So the secondary looks really nice. Running back room, a group that I, you know – have just liked to see Dylan and I have been nearly hand in hand walking around together, looking at these, this group, it's the tight end group and it is just so flexible with what they want to be able to do. So versatile. Uh, We even talked with Mason Taylor on Monday and one of the big things he talked about was, you know, scheme wise, he didn't go obviously into specifics. They've coached him up on not to talk about that, but just 
it feels like that Coach Denbrock is able to do more with the depth and the different skill sets and body types they have in that room. Obviously, the big one, you know Mason Taylor, LSU fans know him, but Camorian Pimpton, so far, the hype has been real with him. Now, look, I think it's a tale of two different things. The athleticism is there. But the uh, we've seen a couple of times, and I've noticed that you know when he's in there, sometimes the coaches are barking at him where to line up, the correct stance, where he needs to be. So it's a kid that has all the God-given talent, but can he turn around and obviously be able to be that consistent force? Uh, but look, I mean, Mason Taylor pretty much echoed it. Very, very true. Very, very blunt. Said the kid's good. He's really long. Like his arms go down to his legs. That's what he said uh, on that quote. And so Pimpton's a weapon. Obviously, you see guys like Mark Way being put in motion. I mean, I don't know about you, but the overhaul of this position when Brian Kelly came in to LSU, and obviously I wasn't covering the team, but everyone knew they were going to try to do something with the tight ends. The way that position has evolved not only in the SEC, but across college football, even at the NFL level. And what they have done in recent years, Brian Kelly having uh, some great tight end success at Notre Dame, it kind of feels like they're getting to a spot. It's still super young. I mean, they asked Mason Taylor, do you feel like the veteran of the group? He's a sophomore. He's, I think he turns 20. He said like in the in very, here very soon, so he's still 19 years old. It feels like it's getting closer to where they want. And as that happens, I think that that is a key component of how this offense can be opened up even more. And we talk about the you know the weapons and Malik Neighbors, uh, Brian Thomas, Kyron Lacey, you know, all the running backs. But as this room becomes more what they want it to look like and they get more experience, I think that might be the key that can really unlock things because then you're talking about defensive mismatches. We, you know, Dylan, you and I saw a lot of times you know, lining the tight end up in the slot, bringing him across the formation, lining him up outside, bringing him in the slot, and running him back out. I mean, there's a lot of pre-snap movement that LSU wants to do. And Denbrock, it kind of feels like, I want to get your guys' thoughts on this, they're going to be able to dial some stuff up that maybe they couldn't last year just because of the depth yeah. concerns and maybe what they wanted to do. Yeah, I mean, I, I think yeah, that, that's, that's very fair to say. I mean, look, going back to Brian Kelly and Mike Denbrock, they both had success – of utilizing the tight end position uh, in their careers. They, they've done a good job recruiting that position and um, finding the right fits for their offense. I, I do think that they're going to feature those guys a little bit more this year. And Mason Taylor, you mentioned him. He's put on about 10 or 15 pounds of muscle too uh, mm -hmm. this offseason. He said he's up to about 255, I believe. So um, I think he's going to be able to throw his weight around a little bit more. Um, but, yeah, I've really liked what they've done. I mean, they've, they've split – pimped in out wide a couple times I think it was Garrett Nussmeyer that hit him on a nice little out route yesterday towards the sideline um and 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 they they've, they've done a really nice job I think using him I, I really do believe he could be a uh you know red zone goal line kind of uh kind of rotational piece for you um you know Mark Way you know he made a couple catches yesterday as well he's made some really nice plays uh in seven on seven uh, you know, I've heard Denbrock several times when he's kind of made a catch and fallen to the ground. Denbrock gets up and yells at him, finish the play, finish the play, which is <laughs> coach speak for run your ass down to the other side of the field uh, with the football. So, uh, yeah, I mean, they, they've, he's just done a really nice job, I think, of finding the talent. You know, I think, you know, McGohan hadn't really shown a whole bunch, I don't think, at this point. Um, you know, he, he's going to be a, a, a piece that I think is going to be kind of a work in progress, but a guy that I think they're still very excited about. And, you know, Gilbreth is, is going to be kind of that blocking tight end mm -hmm. that, that guy you can set extra offensive lineman, you can stick there on the edge in the run game and, you know, maybe give you some help as a short pass catcher kind of deal. But yeah, I think it's really going to come down to Mason Taylor and, and Camorian Pimpton. I think those two, um, have shown the most, at least in the first week. We'll see if that changes once the, the pads come on. But I really like the way that they've utilized the tight end position, and I think they'll continue to lean on that group a lot. Uh, yeah, it's going to be an interesting as, group. Go ahead. I was going to say, as we, as we continue to see the – the the years go by we've, we've only seen a transition from year one to year two but we're seeing what feels like in in practice so far uh to borrow a phrase from basketball a little bit a little bit of positionless offense yeah. um where i mean the tight ends are you know they're they're going to be lined up at the y spot but they're motioning all over like almost every play there's pre-snap motion with somebody at tight end there's um 
I can't name a player outside of maybe like Malik Neighbors that hasn't moved all over the field because you know you want Malik Neighbors out uh, out on the boundary. But you know Lacey's played at all three receiver spots. Kyle Parker, um, Jalen Brown, Chris Hilton, they they have all moved everywhere all over. I've seen Trey Holly line up outside. So um, this is a this is an offense where I feel like you're kind of seeing a lot of the same kind of weapon being produced. Um, and that's just a versatile guy who can kill you in, over the middle or or on the outside. Um Fast, athletic tight ends. Aaron Anderson is has moved all over the place. Um, he looks Kelly, fun. Yeah, Kelly talked about even putting him in the backfield on some occasions just to get him. Yeah, he looks like period. he looks like a running like he looks kind of like a running back. Like yeah, uh, yeah. Kai Kai um looks looks fun out there. And my uh, high school comparison to him was Debo Samuel, but he needed to put on weight. He's put on weight. He's two hundred five probably already. He's up. 20 pounds like they're building they're building versatile weapons that can be used all over the field um and that includes tight ends because Mm -hmm. there's no world in which Komorian Pipton can't win a rep outside (laughs) uh just looking at how he how he moves and how he looks um but having him at tight end is so special because you know I've seen a rep where Komorian Pimpton lines up against Quincy Wiggins and it looks like a different species of human (laughs) Um, in that battle. Like it's just, yeah. Pimpton is, is really, really exciting. Mark way and Mason Taylor look like carbon copies of each other in the best way possible. Yeah. And just kind of bouncing off of that a little bit with the Anderson deal, he put major burns in a major spin cycle the other day. (laughs) I mean, in one-on-ones, it was probably one of the most impressive like moves that I've seen from a player just in that kind of setting in a while. Um, I mean, Anderson, if you get, if, if LSU is able to get Anderson in man to man coverage, I think there's going to be a lot of ways LSU can exploit that, those matchups. They could get him the ball quickly, make one guy miss. And if you make one guy miss, he's off to the races. I mean, he's going to be a really dynamic weapon. If, if they get him up to speed with the offense, kind of, figure out exactly what they want to do with him. I'm not sure he's going to be an every down kind of player offensively from, from the jump. Um, But I would bet he rotates in heavily starting in the Florida state game. I bet you see him returning punts, Um, maybe even kickoffs. I mean, who knows? I mean, I I think that they've been missing that special teamer uh, that really can change dynamic, can change the game uh, by flipping the field, returning kickoffs and punts, that kind of thing. Um, They really haven't had one of those guys, uh, I mean, really since DJ Chark, I mean, he was probably the last guy that I can recall was pretty electric in in the return game. Um, So having that kind of weapon that you can utilize offensively and and certainly on special teams is going to be really interesting to watch kind of unfold here over the next couple weeks of fall. Expect, expect to see a lot of offense over the middle of the field is, is, is what I, it seems to be where Daniels is most comfortable and also, I do not – I can't name a team with two college linebackers that can defend the weapons that LSU has. They just seem specifically built to mismatch linebackers because um, Pimpton has, is six six and fast, uh, and then you have the guys that are ultra-fast and tiny uh, yeah. that can mm-hmm. get, get past linebackers. So, Lacey, uh, too. I, I mean, Lacey's yeah, a Lacey. huge weapon that they've used in the middle yeah, of the field six, some. Yeah. yeah, they they ha- they're putting tall guys at, at slot. Like I'm just, I'm I'm seeing a, a movement towards the middle of the field uh, is where the offense will live, um, which I mean I think that's fine if if it works out. Um, and, and yeah, Daniels made some really nice tight window passes over the middle of the field. Uh, that was a big concern for a lot of people whenever he came in. Uh, was could he work the middle of the field? And uh, it's looked he's looked good so far through camp. Yeah, and you know, you mentioned working middle of the field. Kyron Lacey's come down. We like we said with some a number of contested catches uh, in coverage, and you talk about having good hands. I know there was concern with Chris Hilton. He's looked really good too. Uh, he's kind of that burner. That guy can beat you down the field, but he's had some nice catches as well. And we oh, look, we could talk about the guys delivering the football. I think uh, you know, 
not to get even too much into it, both Daniels and Nussmeyer, you see what you see out of them. I think just for me personally, I can see why Daniels is still the number one guy, but I still can. And I told you this, Dylan, I can still see why there's excitement about Garrett Nussmeyer, seeing him in person, what he could do. Obviously, uh, he's continuing trying to work on that decision-making aspect, but man, he uh, he can fit a ball into a tight window as well. Before we get out of here, here here's one more kind of, tail of the of, of the practice that I've kind of uh, enjoyed watching and we got to see it towards the end of the media viewing period yesterday I'm gonna have a piece up tomorrow morning about this because I think it's a, it's a question that has been asked so much recently especially here through the first couple of media the press conferences and it's one not just the health of Mason Smith but the the ability to come back mentally from an injury like that has a big guy and, and I think that's a great talking point wanted to get y'all's thoughts on this front seven. Um, look, I mean, it's no secret, you know, Dylan, we watched them. The defensive line was getting pushed around. Uh, offensive line was, you know, uh, commanding some of the drills, doing a really, really good job. They lined up for one-on-ones yesterday. Um, outside of Will Campbell, and look, we're not sounding an alarm. Will Campbell handled Harold Perkins fantastically in a one-on-one yesterday. That was a fun matchup to watch. But where do you guys sit with this defensive line uh, look, you know some of the names. We talked with Savion Jones. We talked with Makai Wingo. Um, I'll say this personally. I understand the want to see Mason Smith back to where he was before this injury. But this is – I don't. I think physically he's there. Like, I think physically the, there's nothing else the doctors can tell him. Like, he's healthy. He's done everything he needs to do. For me, it's going to be important to see where is he mentally in this. And that's something they keep saying, hey, we think he worked through that through the summer, through you know doing these workouts with these guys. To me, you're really not going to know until you get into week one. Like You can say all these things during practice, but you're not going to really know where Mason Smith is mentally with this injury because the first time a guy slightly rolls up on him, you're going to start to kind of tell how he feels. You know, what's his, What is his load going to look like? And then kind of the question I have is, does he need to have such a high load with the depth that they've been able to bring in? So, Glenn, kind of your thoughts on the front seven, what you've been able to see out of these guys. Yeah, I mean, look, the first day of 11-on-11s, um, Mason Smith blew through the offensive line three straight times to start off that uh, th- that series. I mean, he was in the backfield like like that, like, like a snap of your finger. Um, he has looked really good. Brian Kelly talked about it yesterday. Uh, but he doesn't have any concerns of where he's at health wise. Um, but you know, it's been an ongoing process, I think, to get him ready mentally to, to kind of lean on that knee. And I think you kind of touched on it there a little bit, Bryce, but, um, he's, he's been fantastic. I, I, I've really liked what Mm -hmm. I've seen from him. He's definitely one of the talkers of the team. Um, you, you can get that sense that he is uh, a no BS kind of guy. He's going to get after it. He's going to, um, talk talk his talk with the offensive line um and 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 he's had some really really great reps early in camp i think people mm-hmm. are going to be really excited about what he can do and the reason that i'm so excited about what he could potentially do is because of what harold perkins is also doing i mean perkins is is yeah. has been a nightmare on the on the edge through the middle they've been working him out a lot in the middle of the field uh, as that inside linebacker um, again this fall I kind of figured maybe they would maybe lean towards getting him more work on the edge this fall but they've really leaned into him being an inside linebacker so far I think yesterday which would be Tuesday's practice was like the first time that I saw him lining up on the edge and, and, and attacking from that spot as well um, but we've we've talked about it all off season. we've said it opposing offenses their first priority on the scouting report is going to be Harold Perkins and yep. If if you find if you find a matchup for him, which I'm not even sure is possible, but if you find a matchup for him, you're going to leave a one on one somewhere, and if that one on one is interior against Mason Smith, look out. I mean, he's going to get yeah. into the backfield, and he's going to make some big time plays for LSU this year. Um, I, I've been really uh, impressed by uh, what Jacoby and Guillory has done. You know, they've they've really, I think. Uh, utilize him well I think he's going to be a guy that you could see rotating in a lot more than than maybe people expected I think most had expected Mason Smith and Makai Wingo to be a pretty solid interior line pass rush that maybe didn't need to come off the field all that often 
I think, you know, the way that they've been lining things up so far, you're going to see a lot of Jacoby and Guillory. You're going to see a lot of Jordan Jefferson. Uh, Paris Shan is going to get his opportunities on mm-hmm. the interior there. Um, you know, I'll leave up. I'll leave the defensive end spot maybe for Dylan to talk about just because I've been rambling a little bit here. But um, I, I do like the the way that LSU was utilizing the interior line. I think those guys – it might be the deepest position on the roster, honestly. The interior yeah. line, I, I think they, they have some really fantastic options that they're going to be able to use. And if those guys stay healthy, uh, they'll, they'll be able to be a dynamic force, I think, for most of the year for the defense. And real quick, Dylan, before you touch on that, you mentioned you're rambling because there's so many names. It's quality depth. Like, this is not just numbers to have numbers. Like, yeah. they've got guys that can go make plays. Uh, Dylan, kind of your thoughts, maybe on some of those edge rushers and maybe where you think and what you take away from uh, Mason Smith early on. The burst is there. Like, I don't think we can deny mm-hmm. that. The burst is there. But, um, you know, your thoughts on this situation. Well, I think it's also important to note uh, an, it's not just Mason Smith getting back to football week one, a year after his injury, it's against the same team. Mm -hmm. It's against the same players. Like it's, he's not really not going to miss a step other than what field that of what other, what field they're playing on. It's going to be against the same guys. It's going to be against the same team. So that's a whole nother mental like challenge that he has to worry about. Um, So yeah, it's, it's to me, if anything, I, I don't, I don't, I'm not going in expecting him to, you know, look like a different player, be shaking in his boots to go out there. But it is something that he's going to have to get over. Um, But I think from everything we've seen, this staff has been really good on and off the field with these guys. Mm -hmm. Um, A a bit of a transformation of of personalities um, in the locker room uh, for a lot of guys. So, there's nothing that worries me too much going into the game, but it, it is something something that he's going to have to work on himself and just get himself in that, into that way. But yeah, physically, there's no question that he's ready to come back and play and be one of the best defensive tackles in the country. Um, now, the pass rush, because that's going to be completely new. You had B.J. Ojolari and uh, and Ali Gay last year, and that was that was your, those were your guys, um, mm-hmm. pretty much. Uh, but now it's going to be a, a lot more of a group effort, a rotation um, at that jack spot. You're going to have a lot of Ovio Gufo and Braden Swinson. And Braden Swinson has probably gotten the most sacks of anybody uh, in drills from spring to fall. Um, and Ovio Gufo, I was, I was yesterday, I've mentioned it a couple of times, but he, like, he looks really fast, um, yeah. pr- probably a little bit faster than I expected. Um, Bryce, I don't know if you saw those reps He's but not he, quite he, as big as I had expected, he, though. He, he's 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 way more of a finesse guy than I expected. Yes, uh, and then maybe Braden Swinson would be that that po- more powerful guy. But I mean, that's why they're playing the jack spot because they'll they need to be a little bit of a, a tweener right. kind of. Mm-hmm. Um, and then over on the other side, uh, we've seen more Savion Jones than I maybe expected, but he seems to be the starter. Um, which is good because that was a high profile guy that he's been here for been around for a couple of years. This is what you want that kind of guy to be. He's a junior now. He's he's been around for a while. He can now take that responsibility. Um, but behind him, the biggest standout, um, both physically and and with with his play is Quincy Wiggins. Um he and poor <laughs> welcome to welcome to college football, Tyree Adams. Uh, those were there were two reps and one on ones yesterday where it was it looked like it wasn't close. It, it looked like JJ Watt versus me, um, almost <laughs> like it was it was just it was two different people at two different levels. Um, so yeah, welcome to the sport, Tyree Adams. You had to deal with Quincy Wiggins. He looks from his uh fre- from his true freshman to redshirt freshman year. He's gonna he's gonna compete. He's gonna play this year. He's gonna get snaps. He looks ready to uh, ready to burst, and and that's really exciting. But yeah, Savion Jones has has looked uh, as um, as good as you would want him to be right now. Yeah, yeah. I I think I think Savion's the clear cut starter there. Um, mm-hmm. I think that's been pretty apparent just by how they divvied up the reps. Um, Wiggins, I think Wiggins popped for me the first time yesterday. I mean, I. 
I, I hadn't really seen a whole ton of Wiggins the first couple days, but I, I do think that he had a really nice day yesterday. Um, Deshaun Womack, it does look like he's kind of yeah. easing his way into it a little bit. I don't think that mm-hmm. he's been um, – He hasn't been consistent. He's yeah. he's made some good plays, but has also looked like a freshman yeah. Um, yeah. Is, what I would, is what I would say. Yeah, and, and look, the offensive line, we talked about it here to start this segment. I mean, the offensive line has been kind of controlling the, the defensive line for most of the start of camp. But yesterday, I think, was the first day where we could stay like the defensive line really started to kind of push through and, and have a lot of success um, in, in 11 on 11s and 7 on 7s and whatnot. But um, and, and just some of their 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 O-line, D-line drills, I think that that was something that, that stood out to me. But um, I'm still, you know, we didn't get a chance to really talk about the offensive line much. But, um, you know, th- those guys are those guys look good. I mean, like oh, Will, yeah. Campbell, Will Campbell's going to be a stud. Um, you know, Emory Jones is looking really good at right tackle. I thought um, what was what's been interesting is how they've used Bo Bordelon. I think he's mm-hmm. had even more weight mm-hmm. from the spring, and he looks like he could compete uh, for one of those interior alignment spots and, and, and rotate in. He's, um, he's been playing a lot of tackle too the past couple of days. Yeah, so like he, tackle, he looks like he could play anywhere. anywhere. But I think he's more yeah. of an interior guy. But I, I, yeah. you know, they could, they could, they could rotate him a lot. Lunsford. Has looked really good. Um, I think you know. Look, the center battle is going to be the big thing with the offensive line. What happens between Charles Turner and Marlon Martinez? You could stick Bo Borderline in there too. I think they've been using him mm-hmm. some at center as well. So um, that's it's going to be interesting, kind of to see how that group behind the group, uh, uh, the group behind the starters develops. Uh, I think that's been kind of the the biggest thing. Um, you know, with with uh, with the offensive line, can't get out of here without. Mentioning Zalance Hurd, he just looks like a, I mean, just a mammoth of a human being. What did uh, Savion so, Jones say? He said, the five-star. Yeah. That kid's good. Like, he couldn't remember the guy's name. He was like, the five-star. He's pretty good. Yeah, we, <laughs> so, asked, him, we no. asked Savion about which freshmen have been, or which newcomers have stood out. And he talked. He said, 52, 54, uh, the, the, the five-star freshman. He looks good. And uh, so he's, you know, look, I think Zalance is, is, is going to find his way into, onto the field at some point this year. I don't know that it'll be right away. Um, I, I still have of, of the belief that if he f- starts to fulfill some of his potential this year, the best offensive line they could roll out there is with him at right tackle with uh, Emory Jones sliding into guard um, and with either Turner, Martinez, Dellinger, uh, Frazier, filling up the interior line and then Campbell on the other side. So, um, yeah, I mean, I, 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 I know we, we've kind of gone on here for a little while. It's probably the longest pod we've had in a while, but, uh, I'll, uh, I'll turn it over to Bryce for sure. Uh, I was gonna say, the, the, the last, Go ahead, the, the, yeah, I was just saying the, well, the last we, we've talked about Rose, we might as well touch a little bit on the linebackers. We haven't, yeah. we've talked about everyone else. Go it ahead. might make sense to touch a little bit on the linebackers. A quick one, a quick, a quick little, a quick little linebacker thing. Harold Perkins looks like, is going to be the starter at middle linebacker. No surprises there. Uh, but whenever he's rushing the edge, it looks like the two is going to be Omar Spates and then Greg Penn, and then also both Weeks brothers uh, have been getting a lot of reps with that mm-hmm. second team as well. Uh, yeah, that's I'll it. add that. I'll Look, add West to Weeks it real quick. Thumper. I like West Weeks. Yeah. Um, yeah. Yeah. I like both the Weeks brothers. I will say this too. Spates, uh, they were working on block shedding the other day. He is a lot stronger than he looks. Like he's a big guy. But I mean, mm. when you think prototypical inside linebacker, a guy that can, um, you know, get off blocks, but we know how pivotal that's going to be against SEC competition and Florida State. Uh, he's that guy. And I think that he's going to be really, really fun to watch. But hey, it's okay that we almost hit the 40 minute mark. And if I can drag this out, we might hit that 40 minute mark. But it's fall camp is obviously in full session, a little fall camp report and a lot of other great news coming your way. Uh, Glenn, collect, correct me. No, don't collect me. Correct me if I'm wrong. Uh, we have three straight days of fall camp, Thursday, Friday, and Saturday, that we're going to have some great fall camp reports, yep. uh, some more fun clips as well. So make sure you stay tuned to the site. Go 24-7 for that. Get your subscriptions in right now for great nuggets and notes. Obviously, Sunny Ship has got us covered on the recruiting front. A big day tomorrow for LSU as both Colin Simmons and Caden Durham announcing LSU firmly in the mix for both of those guys. So make sure you stay tuned to the site. And I believe they're going to be announcing their commitments on the 24-7 Sports YouTube channel. So make sure you check that out. We're going to link that down uh, in the bio below. I think 
the the programming and everything starts starts around 1:45 p.m. Central. That, that they're going to go live. Uh, so obviously, big potential news on the horizon for LSU, and it's a fun time uh, as college football ramping up. What do we guys? We got what 25 days till uh, open for till kickoff for LSU and Florida State. Oh. Something along that. Along the lines of that, my, we've made our hotel and flight reservations, so we're we're good to go there. I'm still waiting on the 24 days, bus, but we're 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 getting there. I think we're September fourth, right? So yeah, 25, yeah, 25 days, yeah. 25 days, 25 days until kickoff. 18 days or 17 days until Vanderbilt and Hawaii kickoff. So make sure you get uh your TVs ready for that one. They're gonna be a lot of fun. Hey, college football is almost here, and it's a great time to subscribe to the channel. Make sure you're on Go Twenty Four Seven. Follow us on social media as well at Go Twenty Four Seven on anywhere you can find that. You see our Twitter handles here below. If you've been listening on Apple, Spotify, wherever you get your podcast, we appreciate you. Like, follow, and subscribe. Leave us a review there as well. Maybe things you want to see on the podcast as we get ready to roll out some uh, some new coverage we're going to be able to do during the season. It's going to be a ton of fun. And if you're on YouTube, make sure to subscribe. Set up those notifications because we're going to be giving you all a weekly chance to interact with us on the show. We're going to see how that goes. You, we're going to give you the benefit of the doubt to start off. But, hey, my name is Bryce Kuhn, Dylan Sanders, and Glenn West. We'll catch you next time here on the go 24-7.